Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Today is October 6, and I don't know where you are, but no matter where you are, I wish you much health and safety. Today, I'm going to be talking about something that is close and dear to my heart. It's about how I help my clients overcome anxiety and fears and feeling overwhelmed due to things that are happening outside of their, um, how do we say it, control. And when they think they have absolutely no control and they can't do anything about it until they realize that they have so much control and the things that they can do. So today's message um, is mostly of what is happening around the world, globally, internally. And it can be internally in your body. It can be internally in your home. So for those of you who do not know me, my name is Lisa Bubari, and as a clinical hypnotherapist, stress management consultant who have been, I've been practicing for over 20 years and have gone through massive transformation of my own from uh, feeling overwhelmed, anxiety, and uh, overcoming ovarian cyst and healing through hypnotherapy. And yes, I did stop smoking and manage pain. And what I work with most of my clients nowadays, especially during COVID, is panic and anxiety. By, by birth, I am Armenian. So today's message is very much dear to my heart for all non-Armenians, uh, my friends who are Americans, and it doesn't matter who we are, we're all human. And if you are not aware, there is a huge fight that is happening in Armenia. Although I'm not from Armenia, I was born in Iran, uh, but my mom, my grandmother, my ancestry, my heritage is Armenian, and yes, Persian as well, for my father was Persian, my mom Armenian. But I grew up in a household that we predominantly spoke Armenian 95% of the time, and so did my father. And grandmother, my grandma and grandpa, and her family, they were all from the Armenian genocide that in 1910, uh, when she was born, uh, she was about four years old when the genocide happened in 1915, uh, actually five years old. And my grandmother, as they were going through the orphanage, the walk after the genocide, taking the children, the orphanage, uh, the Red Cross from America, taking the children to Beirut on that long walk, her mother falls due to weakness and they drag my grandmother over her mother's body. So that was the last time that she gets to see her mother. My grandmother used to tell that story over and over and she would sit day in, day night and write, pray, read the Bible, and talk about where she came from. Today, what is happening in Armenia and around the world, especially in Armenia, there is another, what we call a genocide happening. A genocide for the land, not so much the people. The land that Azerbaijan, another um, territorial fight that is happening, between Azerbaijan and Armenia. And 
my ancestry, that have the all the folks in Armenia, all the young men, soldiers, are out fighting a war that is so unjust. Actually, there is so much of that happening. There are hundreds that are being killed, hundreds wounded. And since this war started between Azerbaijan and uh, Armenia over a week ago, there are two countries that are supporting Azerbaijan and with military, with troops, and that is Turkey. And believe it or not, there is another part of it. And this is not about, I'm not here to be political. I'm here to say what is happening over there. It's like re visiting another genocide that it's happening and what exactly is genocide right is since the time that we know it has happened over and over so there are so many that are being killed and everything not having enough troops not having enough medical supply not having enough military not having enough uh, uh uh, ammunition and yet the soldiers the young boys who are not even soldiers but they're going out to fight and leaving behind their families because of motherland so it's about humanity for those of us who are in America when there is one little dog one little animal that is being tortured or left behind, we create such a big uproar. Today, even though I was not born in Armenia, but I am an Armenian, I feel the same thing. The same that when years ago, four years ago, Me Too movement started, although I did not go for the march, I spoke up, I stood up, and I held hands with the women within my community. I had a voice and I spoke about that. It's not that we have to go and march and protest in order for us to show solidarity, but it is to have a voice and say, I want to make a difference. I want to make a difference and have a voice. So those who have not heard about this, for those who don't know anything about this, for them to be aware. So it is in America that we have so much of that power. Yesterday in Los Angeles, we had senators, we had councilmen, we had uh, congressmen who came to the city hall and they, they stood strong in solidarity with Armenia and yes, it is hashtag stand for with Armenia, stand with Armenia. And that's exactly what I have done. And it is the smallest little contribution. It can be $5, it can be $10, it can be $100. No matter what it is, every single thought, every single voice, every single dollar counts. And we all do with what we can. I have supported um animal shelters i have supported me too movement i've supported all kinds of groups who have said that there is unjust and in inhumanity happening against our cause so today my cause is for me to stand strong with hi sedajan stand strong with my nation, my people, for the first time and say, I stand with Armenia. I stand with Armenians. So two days ago, there was a beautiful, big um, 
march that happened in Los Angeles, in Hollywood, in West LA, that Armenians, thousands of Armenians went and stood in front of the uh, Azerbaijani um, uh, uh, consulate and uh, um, embassy and also the Turkish embassy to say, why are you supporting Azerbaijan? Why is Israel supporting and bringing troops and everything to Azerbaijan? You see, Armenia is such a small little territory, but that territory of Karabakh has always belonged to the Armenians. And we call that as part of our home. It's like, in California saying Southern California, Northern California, Central California, it's all California. America is all America. It doesn't matter which part, even Hawaii, that it's not on a part of this is part of America. So we're all one as humanity, right? And when we think about it, when I stand strong with one Armenian, it doesn't matter if it is from Beirut, if it is from Iraq, if it is born in America, we're all the same. So today, I want you to realize when you are having an anxiety, when you're having a panic for what is happening over there, I want you to sit, uh, sit back, allow yourself to gather your strength to breathe and place your hand on your stomach and say i the best version of me is how i can help not when i am going into that panic and anxiety and this can happen not only up for our motherland when we think we are so far and we can't do anything about it what we can do is like yesterday when I started that watch party and I said, where is CNN? Where is ABC? Where are the big networks? One person picked up the phone and called the networks. Every single decision, every single breath, every single word, every single dollar helps. And I've never been political on my page. But today, I am standing up and saying the same way as I stand up for my clients and say, I stand with you. I stand with you and I hold your hand that if you need, I'm right here. And sometimes we stand back so that Others can lean upon us, just like my clients and you, if there is anything I can help, if there is a place that you need to be, if you need a contact, if you need an immigration attorney, I have that. If you need uh, an, uh, a doctor, we have that. If you need support system, we have that. If you need a real estate, we have that. So I have the contacts for all. And today after, uh, after this, I'm also going to put a contact and information for the funds. We have an organization, a company that every single dollar, one of my, uh, I have a nonprofit organization for motherless children, for those who have lost their mom. One of my board members, Christina Malian, she's an attorney, real estate, uh, I mean, uh, immigration attorney. Uh, she does wills and trusts, not immigration, wills and trusts, and also PI attorney. But she has another company who has said, every fund that you raise, I will match. So if it is $1,000, that company is going to match that $1,000. So we take that 20,000 or I'm, I'm talking big numbers, right? 20,000 instead of 2,000. So yes, let us raise that funds. Today, I'm not speaking about my motherless children, although it is to let you know that if you know of anyone who has a family that mom is not in their life, we can support them. 
we are here to support as a clinical hypnotherapist, as a stress management consultant. If you have a family and everyone, I can be of help and I will be more than honored to help. But right now, the funds, we can match every single dollar so we can send it to Armenia Fund and they can send it to Armenia and, and it will be to support medically, it will be to support our troops with, mili uh, uh, with uh, military support. It will be there to support the families that don't have the men who are working and they are going to front lines that they can have food to supply them and support them. So in a way, I want you to have the understanding that if you have any connections, and it doesn't matter where in the world you are, if you are in California, if you're in anywhere in America, if you are not, if you don't have the means to support us, have the awareness of what's happening outside of your home, outside of your body, outside of America, outside of your country. You can just Google war in Armenia and see what's happening. The same way as it happened many years ago, it is happening today. Yes, there was a political upheaval happening in America, but instead of being so bogged down about who's on the left, who's on the right. Let's see outside of our territory. Why are they fighting? It's not about territory. It's not about what religion I am, what sex I am, what color I am. It's about what is happening as a human to human. So as we are looking and feeling, recognize that every breath that you take, we must be grateful. We must be grateful that we are here. If your loved ones are with you, turn around and say, I love you. Pick up a phone and call. What we have done, we are calling those who we know, and they might have a family member there. The same way as few months ago, that bombing that happened in Lebanon, I picked up my phone and I called my friends that they have families in there to say, you know what, I'm here for you. And just by saying, I'm here for you, makes a big difference. Because every single one of them is going through their own anxiety. The message is about humanity. The message is about saying, I'm here. Because even though I am not feeling, I don't have a friend in Armenia. I don't have any family member in Armenia. And years ago, I stood up because in Iran, I still have families in Iran. So recognizing that I also have family member in Germany. I have family and friends in Poland. We are all connected by one person, by knowing one person. Today, we don't have to be standing next to one another because virtually we have come together and stronger, stronger than ever before. And every person who is feeling overwhelmed and anxious, perhaps all you have to do is express it, speak about it. You know, that's what friendship is to say, I'm here for you. How may I help you? Extend a phone call. If you know a senator, a congressperson, your city council people, reach out to them and say, what can we do to help a situation that is happening globally? 
That's it. And I know I talk about the same thing. And I say, there are so many people in my community that need it. How can I make an impact globally? It's to know about it, to be aware of it. You know, that's what I help my clients. I always say, in order for us to heal, we must express instead of suppressing. So when we express, we release what is angst, what is hurting us, what's angering us. And if you can do that in a more loving way, in a kinder way, instead of looting, breaking, and that's exactly what I started to say, thousands of Armenians who went marching in so many states in America, today in Warsaw, in Poland, in Russia, in England, in France, everyone has stood up to say, let us stand up for injustice. And let's, I, we want our leaders in our country to hear this and do something to help them, right? They went and marched. And they even, because Armenians are known for hospitality, for kindness, for opening door and inviting you in, they put grills there and they made the barbecues, the kebabs, and they served it to the police. They served it to the community. They served kebab and food for all who are marching. We may say that is insane, but that is where we come from. My grandmother would wake up every single morning, about five o'clock in the morning, and she would open her door and she would stand there and say, Father, Thank you for saving me. Thank you for my family. I thank you for giving me a roof over my head and safeguarding my family. As a survivor of an Armenian genocide or any genocide, we know what hearing bombing every single day is. And it doesn't matter if it's a territorial, and I work with women and folks who are going through domestic abusive relationships, and that's a different fight. But it's not a weakness for you to stand up and say, I need help. It's not a weakness to say, I am vulnerable, I need help from another country, from, from another person. And my grandmother at that age, she would light a candle, do her prayer and go back to bed. And I remember before she died, when she was approximately 94 years old, she had me sitting at the corner of the bed and she said, don't you ever forget where you're coming from. It's not about hate. It's about remembering. It's about honoring. It's about respecting your heritage, your ancestry, your family, and more importantly, who you are. Hate and anger does not do good, but expressing and having a voice and standing up and bringing others in your circle and standing up in solidarity, strong, and having that voice to say, I am, I matter, you matter, and together we matter. 
is what makes us as one human being. So as I bring today's session to an end, I want you to know that if you see, if you are watching this today, thank you. Thank you for being a part of Heal Talk Tuesdays. My name is Lisa Bubari. And as I finish, I hope you subscribe to all my Heal Talk Tuesdays because not every Heal Talk Tuesday is going to be light and fluffy. Yes, we will be talking about things that truly matter and more so in the coming weeks and recognizing that we stand by saying, I am love. I am a child of God, and I am here for you. By all means, I hope you subscribe, and I will put a link that if you have the means, and if you wish, help me help them. And for that, God bless you, and may the universal light surround you. Thank you. God bless. Thank you for being here. If you want to check out some of the testimonials that I've got, click right here. But if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago, two weeks ago, even a year ago, 